What is going on, everybody? This is the Deal Finding Friday, where we go on Privy and we show you exactly how to find deals every Friday, how to use the platform, how to take action. Because, guys, I know it can be difficult. I know it can be difficult to pick up that phone, call an agent, not know what to do. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I hope you guys got your sparkling waters. I hope you guys are ready to take action because that's what we're doing today. Let's get it. All right, let me, let me crank this thing open. All right, so where are we at today? We are in uh, Central Florida. We are. I live in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm doing this virtually. I'm doing deals in Florida and in the Utah market. Those where I focus. And if you're watching this live, give me give me a what's up. Say say how you're doing. Want to see how you guys are doing? It's important to me uh, that you interact because, like I said, um, this is for you. This is I'm, I'm doing this so you guys can take action and learn how to get deals. So let's go ahead and get it. I got something in the background going too. Um, so definitely want to make sure everyone's rocking and rolling. All right. Welcome. And again, if you're watching this live, just say what's up. Tell me where you're watching from and maybe I can answer some questions live. All right, everybody. So let's, let's break, let's break it down. All right. Let me share my screen really quick. Um, well, before I share my screen, let me explain to you what's going on. I have a deal. I, I networked with this individual that has several deals under contract. And what I teach people to do that are brand new, I say, hey, leverage the work of other people that are good at acquisitions that have deals. And maybe they're not that good at dispositions or they don't have the time to really individually look at like who can buy their deal specifically because they got like five, 10 deals they're trying to dispo at once. So why don't you network with people that have deals and bring buyers to their deals and you guys can split the fee. I mean, it's whatever you work out. I usually get paid for my buyer. Doesn't doesn't really affect the wholesaler at all. I just add my fee on top. Um, a lot of times when people bring me deals, it's a 50-50 split, 60-40, whatever you work out. But basically, I got this deal and they have it under contract and they're like, hey, Nate, help me find a buyer. And I'm like, okay, let's go. So I'm going to show you right now how I use Privy to comp the deal to make sure it's worth my time and make sure when I'm talking to an investor, I know what I'm saying, that it's a good deal. So let's look at the, one of these deals they gave me. It could be a great deal. It could not be, but let's find out. Okay. So let's dive right in here. Let me uh, share my screen. Over here, okay, everybody. So right here is the deal. Here on Privy, I all I did is I went here and I uh, copy and pasted the address. And what I want to first do is I want to find out what comps are looking like. All right, and uh, you can do that super fast, super easy with Privy. All you have to do is go scroll down here to where it says comparables. Super simple. Um, now we're going to reset it because it usually resets with just within half a mile and does the criteria, but I'm going to show you guys exactly, um, what to, uh, like what to set the filters at if you're not getting a lot of information. And, um, I want to also say, I, I think there's a question, a comment. So let me, let me get to that. I actually just have to write something. I have to put a little banner at the bottom. Give me a second. Um, Learn how to use privy, privy more. Privy. What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in live. Like I said, main means a lot. Anyway, I'm just throwing that at the bottom. If you guys watch this live, great, you can learn. But if you want to learn more, obviously we have a Facebook group that tells you more about privy. But let's let's go right into it. Um, so this is the property, as you can see. I just look go down to comparables. And I, I'm, I'm hoping to see some comparables that will let me know what this house is worth fixed up. Okay. So what we're going to do, this is the house, 247. They have it under contract. The person I'm working with right now, let me look at my CRM. They have it under contract for 221. All right. So that means they're trying, they're asking, sorry, they don't have it under contract. They're asking prices 221. So that means they actually have it for even lower than that. They have it for a lower price because they're trying to make money. So for me, it's either I bring a buyer on top of their asking price, or if they don't have any other buyers, I can say, hey, the buyers that I have are lower than that. Um, can we negotiate? And then they'll say, yeah, we're not getting any love. Uh, we actually have it for like 200. We were trying to make $220,000. Let's split the fee. It's just negotiation time from that point. You know, it just depends what buyer uh, you can get. So anyway, so I go over here and I say, there's only one house sold that uh, Privy is able to pick up and let's take a look at it. So we can go ahead and just take a look at the pictures and say, is this the ARV of the property? Is this a property that's been rehabbed? Okay. And it said it sold a couple months ago. Let's take a look. Okay. It has a pool. All right. Mine does not have a pool. That is a, uh, you know, you, you can't really compare those or you're going to have to add like an extra like 20, $25,000 to that. Um, is this house rehabbed? 
uh, floors. Uh, that's not like uh, really the new style, but uh, I would say it's nice. Um, yeah, yeah. It's I would say like someone that was living there tried to rehab it. It's kind of a weird, funky style. Maybe someone might like it, but uh, not my style. But uh, so it sold for three hundred seven with a pool. Okay. So we're going to um, expand the range because right here on Privy, they're giving us half a mile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, also you can check actives too. I always like checking actives to see what's actively for sale. So you got a 308. Okay. Let's see if this thing is uh, comparable. All right. Looking, looking at this thing, those walls are kind of funky. That kitchen's old, old uh, range up top. Let's see. Old wood that's yeah wood paneling come on guys like that is not attractive oh oh my gosh that floor that wall that shower oh man who painted this thing wallpaper oh dear oh goodness all right guys so let's this is a you would say this isn't like a perfect comp because it's it hasn't sold yet but you can at least see if it's uh you know it's moving it's been on that uh, the market for 44 days i don't think this thing is selling for 308 they've already dropped the price so i would say this is not a, that good of a comp but it's also not fixed up and who knows what they'll sell this thing for but it's been on the market for uh that long for uh, 44 days so what i do is i go to settings and I would go, I'm going to extend it a mile. Let's see what, if we get with a mile, you can change, you know, stories, you can change whatever you want, but I'm just going to extend the range out. Now you can, there's a little trouble in doing this. Like if you extend it too far out, you could be looking in places that aren't comparables that don't like really correlate with the, the city, the area that your home is in. You can't really compare a house that's in one area to another because that area might have better school districts. It might just be a nicer area. And if you don't know your market, then you really like you're at a disadvantage. You know, you're at an advantage if you've mastered your market. Okay. So let's take a look. These, this house uh, sold for 307, 169. These seem like mobile homes. These seem like uh, it's a mobile home. Does it count? Doesn't count. This is 62. Doesn't count. Um, all right. Let's look at this one. Th 358. Let's see if there's any pictures on here. No pictures. Okay. But it's 358 comparable. Uh, I'm not going to go off of that and say, yes, that's a comparable. Uh, 550. Whoo. If this house, if they have it at 221 and they can sell for 550, that's a banger deal. But guys, what's the problem? This house is way newer. It's a newer build. It's, uh, you know, it's really nice open concept. But the main thing I've already actually looked at this, the main difference is it's on a canal that goes, I think, into the lake. So you really can't compare. This thing, the home that we have doesn't have a pool. You're not on the canal on the lake. So 550, I'm going to say, uh, doesn't count. Not something we can really compare it to. And then that's what I mean by areas. You can't go too crazy uh, with your range. But let's go here to the 450. The 450, let's see how this one. See, this is also on the canal. Um, not super rehabbed. Uh, I would say not rehabbed at all. It's an older style. Not, you know, it's livable. But um, yeah. Not really a comp because it's on that canal. Let's extend this bad boy to uh, a little further. Let's go two miles. Now, two miles might be too far, uh, but I'm just showing you like what this, the power of what this tool can do. Okay, so now my property is here, but we're getting into Grand Island and um, I think this thing is called Euclid or Eustace. Okay. So what we're seeing over here is there's way more action. There's way more stuff we can compare it to and uh you just got to be careful right so i'm not the the expert over here in eustace and what sells over there so i could call a real estate agent and that's how i use privy i would find a property that looks like it's been flipped and i would reach out to the agent and say hey i have a property right in the middle between grand island and eustace i was wondering if you could help me comp it and i was wondering if you have any buyers i'm a, i'm looking to wholesale this thing i don't want to flip it i'm a little iffy on it i'm newer to um real estate side, so rather just wholesale it. Is there any buyers that you can bring me to my deal and I'll pay you a commission out of my, my fee. Okay. So now we're looking at this. Let's take a look at the pictures over here to see if any of these, um, look like flips so we can kind of get a, a better idea. Okay. This one sold for two ninety, and this one I think was flipped. Okay. Nice. Nice. Okay. That's a flip right there, everybody. Um, Let's go to this other one sold for 290. Uh, I wouldn't say completely flip, but it's clean. 290. But these properties are in 
right here in Eustis, uh, if that's how I say it. And again, I'm not 100% sure if that area is nicer than where I have it or worse than I have it. Um, that's why I have to make some calls. Okay, so we look at 390, 390 and 350. Well, these homes, as you can see, guys, completely different style, newer build, uh, built in 2014, 2000. My house up here built in uh, 1957, and it's not that style, not a comparable. Okay, 350. This sold. This was built in 2023. So they're showing you a picture, but this one must, if it was built in 2023, this mu these must be old pictures or something. Um, there's no way that's a brand new build. And if someone did brand new build that thing, oof, that's not that attractive in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. Okay. So let's go back here to 85. Let's look at this one. Let's see if this one was flipped. No, not flipped out of date. Um, let's see. Okay. So you can see before and after, but this is the after when they resold it. Privy is just money for helping you okay so 315 is this a comparable 1995 uh not so much i wouldn't i would say no because it's newer but this thing also stinks like it's it hasn't been rehabbed either so this is probably the arv of this was probably like 350 like those ones we've been seeing um let's look at this one 330 okay no pictures that's fine all right oh here we go 310 this is a cool flip uh, you can tell it's been flipped and you can dive in deeper and see who flipped it. We could do some research and call the, the person that bought it with the information we can gather from here before and after pics, which is super cool. Um, yeah, they, they did a good job, man. That's great. So good. Now we have a, a, a decent comp. I wouldn't say this is like a perfect comp because again, we're right in the middle. Our property is right in the middle of where I'm seeing a lot of comps. Uh, between Grand Island and Euclid, or man, why do I keep on saying Euclid? Eustis, right? Uh, so what do we do here? What do we do at this point? Well, I found something like a flipper uh, that I think would be good to reach out to. I can go to public records and I can see who purchased the property. Um, let's see more. I think it's under mortgage history or property history. Let's see. Okay. Boyd, new conventional, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Mortgage, blah, blah, blah. Property history, uh, warranty deed, buyer, uh, seller, 2002, Okay, let's see, change. Uh, 320 list price, transaction, 2000. Let's see, active. I always get kind of confused on where to find the, uh, the LC that purchased it. Assessor record property. Let's see. Okay. I think that's it right here. Two gems investment LLC. So I have two options right now. I can try and skip trace and you can use previous skip trace. You can use open corporates and then you can use true, true people search. You can use different, you know, whatever services you want. And you can try and get a hold of two gems investments LLC who owns it. Okay. Or you can reach out to the real estate agent who represented the agent, uh, sorry, the seller in this transaction. Okay. And that's what I like to do too. It's a little quicker. Um, but you have to involve the real estate agent, obviously in the transaction, if you do that, uh, but, but no biggie, no biggie. You can do that. I like doing that. Cause it's like, you know, they can get a hold. They already have the relationship. So I would reach out to the agent, um, the listing agent who is Roger Michaels. And I say, Hey Roger, this is the conversation I would have everybody. Okay. So I found somewhat of a comparable and I'd say, Hey Roger, um, I'm calling you to see if you, I saw that you listed a property on, uh, 1940, uh, 1940, uh, Cornelia drive. I was wondering if you have any cash buyers. I have a flip right next to it between, um, well not right next to it, but I have a flip uh, property. I'm potentially thinking about flipping, but I, I'd rather not between Grand Island and Eustis. I was wondering if you have any cash buyers looking for deals similar to the one that you had. And then he would say, well, Sure. Let's take a look at it. Now, um, you can see this is the before and after the property that they flipped. And you can also see that they purchased it for 211. How sick is that? Okay. They purchased for 211, 68% uh, of ARV, and it was in worse shape 
then you could say that mine is. Okay. So do you think these people would buy my property that's not in as worse shape or not in as bad shape as the one that they bought for 211? And I have mine at 221. Okay. That's without my fee involved, but I don't really um, worry about that. Like we have a close deal. Now, I'm also assuming that this house is worth 310 if just like the one in here, but we that's the jury's still out on that. We're not sure if this house is uh, comparable to the one in Eustis. Is, is it worth more because it's outside of the city limits or is it worth less? I have to find that out, I have to make the phone call. But that is pretty much um, what you would do to find a buyer. And I, I'm about to call the guy. Uh, but I'm using my phone right now to live stream, so I can't use my phone. Maybe I can, if I call on my computer, you guys won't be able to hear it. Um, maybe you will. No, I don't think you will. Uh, we can give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. But uh, real quick, I do want to show you guys that I also like to run the numbers to see if it makes sense if I were to flip it, okay? Or if when I bring it to buyers, I like to kind of know what the numbers look like. So... If the house is worth 310, okay, this is a my comp analysis for uh, how to know if a deal is worth flipping. So 310, and we have the property, oops, we have the property at 221. That's currently what the, their asking price is. Now it could go up, it could go down, we'll see. So here, right here is the cost to flip a house. You have your hard money because 99% of buyer, uh, buyers use hard money. They don't just have cash and just put it all in one deal. They leverage their money and they buy multiple flips at a time. So just one most of the time. Um, so two points, 12%, that's for the hard money. And that's what it would cost monthly to uh, finance this flip. Yet you bring 15% down. You hold the house. I would say this flip may take three months and then maybe two months to sell it. So five months of whole time where you're paying that interest. Uh, the, it's usually 6% for real estate agents to list and bring a buyer's agent 3% each side. But I'll usually, the people that I work with have their license so they can list it for free. Uh, they don't have to pay the listing commissions and then they just pay for a buyer commission at three or 2.5%. Buyer, uh, potential buyer closing costs 1%. Okay. And we have right here. Um, let's see the rehab on that one. On the one I have, guys, you know, it's outdated, but you could put some new knobs on that, maybe repaint it, do the floors. It doesn't look terrible. That might be popcorn ceiling. I don't know, but uh, it's I don't think it's a full blown rehab. So I'm going to put medium rehab and the square footage of this house is one, six, four, seven. Okay, so it's saying, according to my numbers here, it's about a 40K rehab. So according to my math uh, on the calculator, if someone were to get this deal at 310, resell it for 310, and um, get it for 221, they after uh, rehabs and holding costs, they would make $21,000, making it a 7% return. Would someone do that? What I always teach is, and what all buyers will say, they're like, hey, dude, I got to make at least 10% or higher. But... Do, do they always live and die by that rule? Not always. And could I be wrong? Could this be worth more? Could the rehab be worth less? That's why disbowing deals can be a little tricky because you're just guessing, right? You're, you're just using the information you have. Now, look, what if my buyer goes in? He's like, bro, I can get that done for 15,000. That's that's not a 40K rehab. That's a 15K rehab. I just throw some carpet paint, blah, blah, blah. Um, now, it wouldn't look like the other flip he did, but it would be a better deal. Right. Or what if he's like, Hey man, that was a couple months ago. I think I can sell this thing for 320. It's a better area. Uh, but the rehab is still medium. So there's a lot of ifs, ands, or buts when dealing with deals. That's why having a relationship with buyers that already exists is nice because then you can ask and have those conversations with your buyers and just be like, Hey, you know, th there's a lot of different nuances. There's a lot of different things in this deal. What would you pay for? It? Right. That that's nice when you can do that. Now, I don't have relationships with people here at the moment, but I'm going to get them. And um, that's pretty much it. So I got to call this guy. Guys, give me 30 sec. Give me 30 seconds. I'm going to try and figure out why my, um, not why, but how to, I can call him on my computer. We're going to take a 30 second break. So just bear with me, everybody. Um, maybe while you're waiting. On the 30 second break, just type in any questions you might have and I'll answer when I come back and then we'll, we'll call this agent. All right. Give me 30 seconds.
All right, we're back. What's up, everybody? Yeah, throw any. I have some questions. Throw any questions you might have, and then let's call this agent right here. When should I create an LLC? That's a solid question right there. Guys, let me tell you something. Um, you don't need an LLC to start doing this business. Is it helpful? Does it make you feel official? Yeah, it does. But is it necessary? Uh, no, it's not necessary. I'm just going to be real with you guys. You don't need to get an LLC to do your first deal. Uh, but if you wanted to do it, go ahead, You know, reach out to me. I have some um, options. Some I can kind of give you an idea of who I use or who I recommend. Uh, you can DM me or message me or whatever. But uh, no. It's not something I would focus on. What I focus on is learning the uh, the skill set of how to comp, how to look at deals, how to network, and how to uh, bring deals to buyers. That's what I would do. What up, Nathan? Thanks for the tutorial. I'm about to call some agents now. I recently used Privy to find some potential subject to deals. Crates off junior, if that's uh, how I say it. Congratulations, man. That's what I like to hear. Anybody else have any questions while I'm answering questions? And if not, let me, uh, let me see if I can get this uh, to this thing to make a phone call uh, so you guys can hear it because it's, you know, it doesn't really matter if I call and you can't hear it. Maybe you can hear me, but I want you all to, to take, to hear it, take action. All right, let's see. Let's go right here. All right. All right. I think I might be able to do this. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to have to switch my screen a couple times, but uh, you guys just bear with me. Okay. What we're going to do right here is we're going to go back to Privy and we're going to find out who is the agent that represented this uh, this uh, se this seller that flipped this house. So we go right here and it's Roger Michaels. Okay, so we're going to go to Roger Michaels. We're just going to type that in. And uh, let's see what else. So Roger Michaels, Orlando Re uh, Regional. That's uh, buyer's agent. Is that the office? Let's see. Yeah, that looks like that's the office. Let's see if that works. Uh, real estate broker. All right, so he's a broker. Good for him. Um, let's see. Let's see if this is the guy. Okay, Roger Michaels. Let's go, brother. All right. So what do I do now? Let's let's prep the conversation because a lot of you that might not have done had this conversation a lot, you might not know how how to you know navigate it. So I'm gonna help you navigate it right now. Um, we're going to do like a, we're going to do a practice run role play by myself. Uh, so you guys can see what it looks like. So I'd call, uh, Roger and I'd say, Hey Roger, how you doing? My name's Nathan. And I'm calling you cause I noticed that you're a real estate agent or broker that represents, it seems like you represent flippers. At least I saw a flip that you listed, um, in October. Well, no, this month it just sold. Wow. Amazing. So, uh, then he would say, yeah, what do you want? And then I'd say, look, I have a property. I just, I'm an investor from Salt Lake City, Utah. I just started invest, uh, going to the Orlando market. And I found a property that, uh, you know, I think is a good potential flip, but I'm not a hundred percent sure if I want to flip yet. Uh, I do wholesale and assign on occasion. And I was wondering if your buyer is looking for any more deals, I'd love to bring it, have you bring, show it to him, see if he'd be interested. And if he is, I can definitely uh, get you paid a commission uh, for bringing the buyer. That's it. And if he's like, forget you, I don't work with wholesalers, you piece of trash. I'd be like, okay, have a good day. Let me keep going. So let's, let's go for it. All right. So let me share my tab and let's call him. All right. All right. Let's see. I got to share my actual tab. Oh gosh, darn it. Okay. In order for me to share it, I got to be on a specific browser. So give me, just bear with me again, everybody. Almost there. All these dang browsers, it's kind of hard to navigate everything. Okay. Let's see. Here it is. Let's go here. This should work. The reason I have to do all this is because if I share too much of my screen, YouTube will be like, hey, just quit sharing all your CRM information with the world. And then, you know, I get in trouble and they, they don't let me... Um, they don't show my stuff. All right. So here's my CRM. I can call for my CRM and let me go grab his phone number. Let's see. Right here. Here it is. Let's call him. Let's see if he can answer. Now, look, I try to call three times in a row just because people sometimes don't answer numbers they don't know. So let's uh, hopefully he answers on the first one. Let's see. 
Hopefully you guys can hear. If not, I did my best so you could hear it. Hello, you've reached the voicemail for Roger Michaels. Can I call you back as soon as possible? Okay, he's probably busy. He hit, he hit me with that um, that uh, end. You know, the end. The call. He hung up on me. I think. Uh, all right, let's let's check this out. Done. Let's go here. Let's try it again. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Roger. Quit playing games, bro. I need you to answer. For everyone in the world. Hello. Hey, Roger. How you doing? Hi, who is this? My name's Nathan. Um, I don't think you know me, but uh, I was just calling about one of your properties that you recently just listed and sold. Okay. Yeah, do you have a couple minutes? I, I, I don't mean to catch you at a bad time if you're busy. I do. Just so you know, your phone number... Shows up as spam on when you call my my, my, uh, my uh, number. Do you have a ahead. Do you have an iPhone? I do. Yeah. So unfortunately, so I'm calling you from my uh, CRM, which is my computer um, for work, and yeah. that dang thing flags it as spam. My bad. Well, um, thanks for letting me know. I just have a quick question. So I'm uh, an investor out of Salt Lake City, Utah, but I uh, I started coming to Orlando area because. Salt Lake, the market is like at a standstill. It's like nothing's moving. So I'm just investing and looking for properties in Florida now. And uh, I came across a, a property that I'm not, I'm kind of hesitant to flip. So I do assign and wholesale sometimes. And I saw that you represented a, a flipper on your last flip on 1940 Cornelia. So the reason I was calling is just to see if you know any cash buyers that are looking for more opportunities to flip. I think I have a good one. Yeah, no, that was actually me. I also flip houses. Oh, you, oh, you also flip? Okay, so that man, you did a great job I on that one. Mostly. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, what, what do you have? Well, so I have something that's in between Grand Island and Eustis, so it's not in the Eustis. It's like, um, I guess, right in between on the uh, near the main highway. Um, but I can send you the information. But do you do you are you familiar with that area? And do you work there, or do you only work in Eustis? No, I do. Is it in Leesburg, Mike? Uh, let me, let me check. It, it says on the, the, I'll just give you the address. It's, um, Edgewater circle and Eustis. So it's still Eustis. Okay. Yeah. If you want to send it over to me, this is my cell number. So yeah. I'll is this, it. is it like, I, I would like to know what else you're looking for if you are in the market. Cause it looks like you just sold that one. And I'm, I'm looking every day for properties, whether it's from me or other people I network with. Yeah, it is. I look in the in the Lake County, Seminole County areas primarily. Uh, a single family, nineteen seventy eight or newer block. Okay. And uh, yeah, you know, two two baths preferred, but I'm pretty flexible. With everything else. Are you are you pretty flexible on the built date? Because the one that I'm looking at it was built in nineteen fifty seven. I think it is block, but it was built in fifty seven. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I usually approach those properties with, with, with caution. Yeah. Because of their age. But, of course. Um, but I, I, I'd look at it. If, if previous owners had, you know, re, re-piped and, and rewired, then it might be uh, something worth looking at. Okay. Now, uh, I just want to kind of let you know, I'm, you've probably talked to, I'm assuming you've talked to a lot of wholesalers, right? Like, that's probably where you get some of your All deals. the time. Yeah, I've got five or six that send me deals all the time gotcha well i just kind of want to let you know i'm a little different than the traditional wholesaler that just throws you on like a list and just email blasts you non-stop with deals that aren't good like what i try to do is i specifically when i go to a new market i try to develop you know a good relationship with like five to ten core buyers and specifically go out and look for deals that are directly meet your criteria so i don't waste your time and just send you stuff that you don't even want to look at you know so it does that work for you if I have something that you know meets your criteria just to text it over and you kind of give me your thoughts on what you'd pay and then I can either get it at that price or negotiate it lower if I don't have it low enough? Sure. Okay. All right. Well, um, I'll send you over this information. Is it better to text it or to um, email it? You can do both. I'll give you my email address. Okay. Uh, actually, let me let me text you and my co contact sure. info and you text me back your email just so I have it in my cell phone or my CRM. Does that work? 
One more time. Sorry, I, missed, I lost you. Oh, I was just saying, uh, I'll just text you real quick my contact info and just text me your email so I have it in my system already. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. All right. Well, hey, Roger, it's a pleasure. Um, look forward to doing some deals. I mean, I got a couple in the pipeline, so hopefully we can do some quick. Are you looking to close on something fairly quick or since you just sold that other one? Yeah. Uh, two three weeks i can close okay great all right well I'll, I'll start sending you stuff and hopefully we can get something done quick thanks all right have a good one roger you too bye bye hey let's go what do you guys think that was that was literally exactly what we're looking for can you guys want to give me some feedback if you guys are watching this live I, come on how sick was that? We got Asia saying, "Low key make me making me want to switch from prop stream to privy." Yeah, bro, I I, I would agree. Prop uh, privy, yeah. You know, I don't think prop stream can hold a candle, dude. I used to use prop stream. I used to. No hate on them. Obviously, they're doing their thing, but um, no, like I don't use them anymore. So, okay, so give me some feedback guys. Was that good? Was that bad? Like I, I didn't want to be on there. The phone, he did seem, I could kind of sense like maybe, uh, he was like, me, you know, maybe a little busy driving. Sounded like he was driving. We got it. We got Asia saying great, great call. Sell him a property. you dang right. We got to sell him a property. So everybody, that's that was uh the deal finding Friday. We we found a deal. I didn't spend any money on marketing. I have a property that potentially meets his criteria. I'm gonna text that over to him right now. He's gonna send me his email and I'm gonna send him stuff that meets his criteria. He just told me what he wants. Okay. So I'm just gonna I wasn't really paying attention to like because I've you know I got a lot going on right now, but I'm gonna text him and I'm just gonna say, Hey, can you again tell me your um your buy box criteria just so I know, you know, when I see stuff, I can send it over to you. Guys, come on. What, what else you got? Like you, if you were watching that live, you obviously got to say, yes, that was good. Yes, that was bad. What could he do better? What could he, what did you like? I think it's, uh, I think it's nice, uh, to hear from the crowd. I know Aja said he's thinking about going to privy. Well, hopefully this call helps you guys know the power of privy, the power of, you know, seeing the before and after the comping tool. It's amazing. It's amazing. It helps you do deals. Okay. It's a tool built by investors for investors. Uh, if you guys don't know Benson Juarez, he's the man. Um, he built it, you know, he, he's got an amazing team behind him that works with him and, you know, he built it. So definitely, definitely need to check it out. All right, everybody. That was the deal finding Friday. Uh, if we don't have any questions or anything coming in at the moment, we're just going to sign off and I hope you guys can take action because I hear it every day. I hear people say, Oh, I can't get deals. I don't know how to do this. Look, just by watching deal finding Friday, you can take action. I just showed you, you know, how to get a deal, how to comp it and how to find a buyer all within guys. I've been live for 34 minutes right now. Okay. So if I can do this in 34 minutes, how much can you do it working six hours a day? You know, cause you got lunch and maybe you're pitter pattering around or, eight hours a day. If you're, you're, you're really just on top of things and you don't take any breaks. Uh, what could you do? That's all I got to say is what can you do? If you take action, I promise you that if you do what I just showed you, if you find deals, if you comp them, if you call the right guys, you're at least, you're at least going to get some feedback. All right, everybody. So that's all I got to say. Investor thrive. I was going to say, I was going to do the investor thrive jive, but I don't really feel like dancing right now, but that was a good call. Everyone, have a great day. Take action. No excuses. And uh, be grateful. Peace.